Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Ratman at Ratio, and I'm going to spend some time discussing the mechanics and the bits of the game that aren't particularly well explained. I'm going to start with hero power and then work on to crafting as well as talents. Hero power affects your damage dealt, number of enemies penetrated by attacks, and the stagger level. Stagger is how hard you hit enemies. Hitting an elite with enough stagger will break them out of their attack animations. Hero power is determined by two things, your hero level, up to level 35, and the power of your equipment, up to 300. The way hero power for equipment is determined, it's the average of all of, all of your items. So, if you have all 300, you will have 300 hero power. In order to increase hero power whenever you're first leveling up, you want to open your spoils of war one at a time. You get spoils of war from leveling up and from completing levels. Opening them one at a time and equipping the highest power you get and then opening the next is the way you can slowly creep your hero power up. And as you can see here, just because you have high hero power doesn't guarantee you will get higher hero power. As I'm at max, I frequently get things below what I need. I'm going to open a few more here. As a point of example... Wow, I'm unlucky today. Lots of low... Sub 300s. Alright, there's also the open 5 at a time if you're already at 300 power like I am. You can use the open multiple in order to bulk open boxes. That's very lucky for accommodation chest. Now once you've got all your high stuff equipped, I'll take a moment to talk about the crafting. So as you're leveling up, you'll get a lot of items that aren't very good and you'll want to get rid of. Crafting is your friend and you can use it to just offload the things in your inventory. Now why do you do this other than organization's sake? You can see that you get crafting materials. Salvaging white items will only provide you scrap. Salvaging green items will provide you the green dust. Blue, blue, and orange, orange. It's pretty self-evident. But what's not noted here is that sometimes when you scrap things like trinkets, charms, necklaces, you get the chance for the gem cutter stuff. Salvaging weapons gives you an opportunity to get weapon parts, which are absolutely needed for the... Yes, I'm going to keep that. For crafting later. And I'll explain those in much better detail in a moment. Now, let's say you've hit power 300 and you really like a weapon, but it's green rarity. That's where you go to upgrade item, and you select that green item. And you can spend the scrap you've gotten from scrapping other weapons to upgrade it. To blue, and then to orange. However, upgrading orange to red requires bright dust, which you only get for scrapping red items. Once you have something that's of orange rarity, you can reroll the properties on it until there's something that are appropriate or that you like. Let's go with this halberd, because why not? Rerolling the properties on a weapon will reroll the two blue stats on the weapon. It costs A green and A blue dust. Now, it's worth mentioning that orange weapons have a range of which the stats will be. And the only difference between orange and red weapons are that orange roll within that range. Red weapons will always roll the max. So you're going to sit here and spend your green and blue dust until you have two stats that you like. I'm personally a fan of crit chance and crit power, though crit chance and attack speed are also good. But you can re-roll for just about anything. Stamina, block cost reduction, increased block angle, and other such things. Once you've got two properties that you like, you can go and re-roll the trait. Now, rerolling traits is a bit more of an expensive prox process because it requires the orange dust. I've collected a fair amount of orange dust in my hours of playing, so I can go ahead and do that. There are a lot of different traits that you can get on melee weapons. There are also traits on necklaces and charms and trinkets. All do different things. If you want what's meta, if you get attack speed and crit chance and then get swift slaying, you can attack really quickly, and the best defense is a good offense. You can't get killed if there's nothing to hurt you. I'll also talk about applying illusions. As you play the game, more weapons you get will have different skins. Some of them are kind of lackluster. So, for example, 
a normal sword skin isn't very spectacular. I'll use the blacksmith sword as an example. The blacksmith sword is very boring. But as you can see, since I've played a lot, I've unlocked illusions for other skins. And if you get red weapons out of a container, out of a box, out of your spoils of war, you can actually apply that illusion to other weapons. It won't have the stats, but it'll look pretty. If you're hurting for dust, you can downgrade dust. You can downgrade orange into blue and blue into green, but you can't upgrade dust, unfortunately. If you're struggling to unbox an item that you really want or really like of an appropriate power, you can go to the crafting. Crafting a random item is only 10, but if you want to craft a specific item, it costs 10, and then a either weapon part or the respective other material, the uh, gem cutter's toolkit. I'll go ahead and just craft randomly to show it. I got a 300 power trinket, and let's go ahead and craft a greatsword for argument's sake. Note that when crafting, you can get below your optimal hero power, or your optimal power, which is unfortunate. Remember, scrap the things you don't want to get either a reimbursement or just materials. You note, know, for the two items, I spent 20 scrap. I only got five back. It's not perfect, but it's there. Now, when it comes to talents, you get a talent every five levels as you level up and progress in the game. Talents on every single character are different, but every single character has two talents that are in common. A heal share talent, which is level 5, healing yourself with a first aid kit or healing draft also heals your nearby allies for 20% of their maximum health and clears wounds. And enhanced power. It is worth mentioning that enhanced power is the only one of the level 15 talents that actually affect your ranged weapons. It's also worth mentioning that you can look over your different characters and equipment without swapping them by using the interface in the top right and then selecting them. Now, I'm not going to tell you what talents to use. You can make a build that you enjoy. Every character has multiple different playstyles, and you can do a bunch of different things. And at the end of the day, as long as you have fun, and then that's really all that matters. If you're having trouble with the parkour and platforming of Vermintide 2, there is a obstacle course. I start here, but you can theoretically and realistically start over above Chaos Wastes. Yeah, getting those jumps can be difficult. And the other thing to explain is, uh, once you've leveled up enough or progressed far enough in the story, I don't know which, it's been a very long time since I've done it, this area will open up and allow you to experiment with your new weapons on training dummies. There are normal... Vermintide 2 tag system. What you gonna do? There are two types of dummies. Normal dummies, dummies that act as clan rats or normal dudes, and armored dummies that act as storm vermins and armored enemies. These can be picked up and moved, so you can experiment with how your weapon cleaves, or what the swing angles are actually like. Right, it's also worth mentioning that there are a number of hotkeys in the game that can be used to your advantage. You can press P to open the shop and check your daily rewards. You can press O on your keyboard if you're playing on PC to open up Ocarina's challenges, check your quests, or your challenges. Remember that quests refresh daily, except the weekly ones that refresh, you guessed it, weekly. Event quests are a rare thing. You can press I to open your inventory. You can access the talents, the crafting, the cosmetics from here. Uh, you can inspect your different weapons and whatnot with the Z key. You can go third person with X. You can't really do anything here, but uh, this is a very old system. You can tap T to tag things, hold T to do proper callouts. You can call out a patrol, a monster, say thanks, ask the team to come over to you, say yes or say no. You can also ask for help. Because boy howdy, we all need it. If you hold U, that is the emote wheel. They exist. I don't have a whole lot of feelings about it. Now it's worth mentioning that you'll want to go into your controls and set a weapon special. 
Not all weapons have a weapon special, but the ones that do tend to have them be powerful things. For example, with Kruber, there's a spear and shield. Where in the world is it? There it is. And you can see that it's got a weapon special, Guarded Thrust. Now... Guarded Thrust allows me to attack while keeping my guard up. Not all weapon specials are actually useful, but most tend to be game changers. I'll go ahead and switch to Assault Spire for one that actually does something and one that doesn't do anything at all. With Assault Spire, the Rapier and Pistol, he does have an offhand pistol that you can use. It has some serious damage fall off, but uh, you can use it while guarding and it doesn't drop your guard. And on his pistol, he's got Pistol Twirl. It is much less helpful, but... You can just flex on enemies. It's a nice thing. When you're looking at characters and selecting characters, you can see what they do and get a general feel for how they're going to play. Over on the right, talking about their perks, their career skill, and their passive skill. Now, it's important to know not only what your character can do, but what other characters can do. It'll help you be a better player and understand what your teammates are doing. Oh, one last hotkey I forgot about. You can press M at any time to open up the missions thing. You can go to Quick Play, Custom Games, your Heroic Deeds, Twitch integration if you're a streamer, the weekly event, which is always something interesting, or you can even go to the lobby browser. Don't ask me how they sort by country. I wouldn't know. And yeah. Those are all the outside of gameplay things that are useful. If you have any questions or want things elaborated on, feel free to ask in the comments section. I'll field any questions that I can. And uh, that's all for now.